This story was told to me by a fellow named Max Stitz. He owed me this story, and it went like this. There was an old man who walked along a dusty road with a cornfield on each side. You looked at him, you could once tell he was a man of means, a very important man, but now he'd become a bum. Most of his hair was grown, and what little was left had long turned to gray. He appeared to be about 60, but he probably was much older. As you looked at this man, you could tell that arthritis and bursitis had long set in because he had a stick that he'd cut from a tree to lean on. His suit was in rags. <clears throat> he had a hole in the left shoe where he slipped a piece of pasteboard in to keep out the weather as he walked through the mud puddle. A twig of hay was behind his left ear, probably from the bed he slept in last night. He thought, and he muttered to himself as an old man will as he walked along this dusty road, I have to buy, get something to eat. I have no money. I have to beg again. Where can I find a house? He saw no home. He went up a three-foot rise on a 30-foot span that seemed like a mile straight up because of the pain in his joints. As he got to the top, he sat down on a log to rest a spell, muttered to himself as an old man will, I have to have something to eat. And he turned and looked, and the only other end of the log sat a young man who appeared to be about 10 years old, just whistling and twisting and singing like a kid will. <laughs> so he tapped him on the, with his uh, stick, and he says, young boy, could you tell an old man where he can buy or get something to eat for the night? I haven't eaten several days. Oh, said he, in the village that you pass through below. Village? Said he, I saw no village. Just a cornfield on each side of a dusty road. He says, yes, there's a village. Take a look. And the old man turned, and sure enough, a brand new village smelling of fresh paint with architectural design of ancient Rome appeared out of nowhere on each side of that dusty road with cobblestone the road had turned into. He thought, how strange, but I better hurry and go down before it disappears. I won't eat. What's the name of this village, my boy? So when I go down, I can sound very intelligent and converse with the people. Anything is possible, said young boy. For you, maybe, but not for me. You see, I'm an old man. See, I've had my day. I've long passed success. You can do it, but anything it possible is means for the young, not for an old man like me. But I asked you for the name of the village, not philosophy. You see, I'm hungry, and that is my primary concern. Anything is possible, said the boy again. You said that, boy. You say it one more time, and I'm going to crack you on your knuckles with this thing. I want to know the name of the village. Now, there's no horse around no more. Sir, the name of the village is the village of anything is possible. Uh, well, thank you. So he got up, hobbling down the road as an old man will. And he got to the bottom of the hill, and he knocked at the first house on the right. Because the right side of the street is the right side to begin anything, is it not? And as he waited for them to answer the door, he saw children, black and white and red and yellow, all appeared to be 10 years old or less. They were in harmony. There was no trash cans to be found. The street was clean. Everything was neat and orderly. There was no policeman. It was a place that could be heaven. And all of a sudden, a young boy snatched open the door and said, Yes, sir, what can I do for you today, kind sir? Could you spare a bite to eat for an old man? Certainly. This is a village of anything is possible. You can get anything you want. Come on in and sit at my table. And the old man went in and he sat down. And the kid snapped his finger and winked his eye, and a meal with all the tablecloths, all the silverware, a meal fit for God just appeared out of nowhere right on that table. And the old man thought it was strange, but before it disappeared, he dug in without even saying his blessing. And before he'd taste a second bite of food in his mouth, he knew this is the greatest food he had ever taken in his life, and he'd been in restaurants all over the world. Bombay, London. San Francisco, L.A., Dallas, Charlotte, Atlanta, Georgia, you name it. He had been there, even the Frankies. All right. And all of a sudden, he 
talk. As he smacked his lip, very grateful as an old man can be, and he looked at the boy and he says, a boy like you can prepare a meal like this? When I have been to the best with all the greatest chef, and you are young, and you can do this? Anything is possible, said the boy. When you live in the village of anything is possible, anybody can do it. And he shook his hand, as an old man does, and he pointed at the boy, the 60-year-old man. He says, how old are you, my boy? He says, I'm seven. You look much wiser than a man of seven. The wrinkles around your eyes. Uh, you look much wisdom. Were you always seven? Oh, no, said the boy. One time I was 70, but I discovered that zero meant nothing, and I threw it away. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be seven. But 30, 30 I was a man of mean. 30 I was a handsome guy. I had wavy black hair. 30 my seat, suit was clean and pressed. 30, I had a jet plane. I had a beautiful wife. I had a wonderful company. 30, before I became an alcoholic and a beaten bum, I was somebody. Yes, could I be 30 again? Oh, just like that, said the boy. Anything is possible. This is the village. Haven't you got the message yet? The old man said, yeah, but how would I look like a man of 30? How would I talk like a man of 30? How would I feel like a man of 30? Oh, it's easy. How many days are in a year? Well, everyone knows that, said the old man. It's 365. Who says there has to be, said the young boy. Suppose it was 730, how old would you be, Doc? Why? I'd be half my age, 30. But how would I feel like a man of 30? I mean, just say it, it don't make it so. Well, here's a calendar. Change the months that have 32, 31 days to 62. The old man did. Now change the months that have 30 days to 60. And the old man did. Now, February 28th, right? You got to give it 56. Well, this is leap year. Add two more. And by the time he'd reached December the 31st, the old man looked in the mirror on the wall and he was a young, handsome man again. He had his suit was clean and pressed like the day he bought it. He noticed there was no pasteboard in his shoe. And his hair had wavy yet black. And he was a young man. And talking to himself as a young man will, he jumped out of the streets of anything possible, singing and whistling and thanking the lad for being in that village. And before he'd reached the edge of town, he had one little thought, as most people will, when something good happens to them and they're not used to it. An old man thinking he can be 30, that's the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my life, just like you're saying right now. And no sooner he said it, and he had to get a stick to lean on. And his hair had all gone and turned to gray what was left. Bifocals came out of his pocket. He wobbled to the top of the same old hill, muttering to himself as an old man will. He sat down on the same old log with all the aches and pains. And he had one more negative thought, because most people can't destroy themselves with just one. They have to pull out another one to make sure it's gone forever. A village called anything is possible, most stupidest thing I've ever been told. And he turned to look where the village had been with a dusty old road and two cornfields.